This thing's firstly to take a little sip of coffee from my Tropica Live mug. Tropica Live. We've got ADA cup. I've got an ADA cup. We're presenting that. today, aren't we? Yeah. It was as well used. The logo's kind of scratched away. It's not even gone through the dishwasher. It's just, yeah. I have one. I use one at home and I make a flat white in it. So I've got a new espresso machine. Espresso, right. not espresso. 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 Double espresso. And then I fill it up with full fat milk. Yeah. And then I stick it in the mic uh, cold milk and I stick it in the microwave for one minute ten. Right. Stir it and then it's a fat white. Oh right. It's perfect. That's nice and easy. I mean, it takes like literally ninety seconds. I might have to try that. I'll show you. You mm. come around after. I mean, actually I need yeah, to home to... if that's all right, because yeah. Anna's got the car. Oh I'll drop you home when I'll And they'll make you uh, I can make you one. Yes, do that. Cheers. Cheers. Uh, thanks for inviting me, Dave, to film Thanks for coming in, mate. It's a pleasure. It's... Always a pleasure. Yeah. Um <clears throat> well we've been friends for six years. 2016, yeah. so almost seven, isn't it? Yeah, seven years, wow, yeah. yeah. And the shop has come such a long way. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, you've got how many displays now, 10? I've got 10, uh, 11, including the empty one, yeah. yeah. And how many members of staff <coughs> now? Five, including myself, yeah. Wow, so it's just you're a one-man band. One-man band to start so with. You had one display. Yeah. <laughs> and then you had these little um, plasticky, like, Greenhouses. Yeah, we had, yeah, yeah. And, and the uh, we had tents at one point. I think you were just in this one unit here. Yes, yeah. And yeah, back in Crazy the day. Crazy how it's just expanded and, and grown with the staff and the stock and the customers, everything's just yeah. grown. Well, congratulations on its success. Yeah, thank and, you. And um, very grateful to live so nearby and Likewise, see, help each other out. So very grateful, mate. Yeah, good. And equally grateful today to have an opportunity to film this masterful Iragumi. Mm -hmm. Um, talk us through what you've done so far. Decided on having an Iwagumi for the shop because we haven't got a proper Iwagumi yet. And the main reason for this was this stone here came in uh, from Wio. This is elderly stone. Mm -hmm. And I was just had to use that piece. It's a stunning piece. So yeah. that kind of set the, uh, the, the set layout the for that one, yeah. set the tone for that one, yeah. And I just wanted really big, bold Iwagumi. I really wanted to try and get to the surface with the rocks and have something that's really going to stand out. And from where you walk into the shop as well, as soon as you open the door, you look directly down here and you can get a really long distance view of this yeah. minimalist yeah. Um, style. It's very strong. Did you, um, yeah. did you see something similar that you kind of inspired by or is it completely inspired that, by that one stone and you went from there? Um, I've seen some big Iwagumi hardscapes. So I'm probably inspired unconsciously by, I've got a few in my mind right now actually. Yeah. Um, but it was that, that and, and mainly this stone, yeah, I would say, yeah. Awesome. And how many stones are there all together in there? There's seven, I think. One, two, three, yeah, seven stones. Yeah, we total. often use odd numbers, don't we? Yeah, odd Iwagumi. numbers. Once you get beyond seven, you don't really pick no. up on the number, but no. up to then, yeah. So how many, um, in terms of weight, how, how much are we talking in total, would you say? Well, the main stone's about 30 to 35 kilos. Okay, that's 80 pounds for American people. Uh, yeah. yeah, and then the overall thing, it's 65 kilos, roughly. Wow. Which, I don't know how many pounds that's that is. It's about 140, 150 pounds. Yeah. And uh, people will be interested in how much the sort of setup costs. It is a high-end system, of course. So you, how much is elderly stone per kilogram? Uh, six pound a kilogram. Times? Times 65. So you're looking at over 300 pounds, yeah, 400 three, pounds, three basically. pounds yeah. So about yeah. 500 US dollars just for the hardscape. Yeah. But it is absolutely beautiful hardscape. Yeah. Um, my friend Alan, Adam Pashkella supplies is a very similar product, if not the same. Yeah, Frodo Frodo stone. stone yeah. And you do get the odd piece, which is just magnificent, doesn't it? And it really does make you want to yeah. get it. And, it, you know, how can I use this in my next scape? And I guess that's one of the reasons. You know, it just happened, yeah. You just see that one piece and that just inspires you for a new scape. And that's yeah. what the stone can do. 
And so did you, how have you, because it looks like it's quite precarious, kind of leaning forward a touch, is it? How have yeah. you supported it? Well, the stone, a lot of the stone is buried, the back half, which is quite an uninteresting part of the stone anyway. So it kind of bends underneath the soil. So just the weight of the soil, it's actually uh. holding, and there's a supporting stone just here as well. Okay. So I can do this quite firmly and yeah. it is, is not moving. Okay. Um, so that kind of adds the drama and the impact of the escape because you think that it does look precarious and like it's going to fall and hit the grass and makes it look pretty cool. Yeah, excellent. And so I'm just thinking practicality wise, because of the overhang, are you going to get any shadowing in front of that stone? If you yeah, I mean, that? that's another reason why I lent it forward actually. Okay. So you get that shadow because shadow's often forgotten about when you're escaping. Yeah. So it's good to keep that in mind where the shadow spots are going to be. And well, positionally, that having a shadow here sort of off centre and it, the stone was kind of straight up and vertical and you didn't have any shadow and all I did it just take a small twist and a and a rock forward mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden it completely changed the scape and you got that shadow and that impact. Yeah, beautiful. And will that impact the plant growth if you can use yeah. do you think it will I think so. I mean um, we'll probably struggle to grow some carpeting plants around here. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll probably put some um, a shade plant there yeah. of some sort. I guess Every, it's a test and adjust, isn't it? Because sometimes you can be surprised that yeah. sometimes plants will grow in surprisingly low light. I mean, if it do, it works there, great. If it doesn't, you can just take it out, can't you, and swap it for something else. Okay. Well, that, let's talk about the actual... Oh, how long did it take you to actually come up with a hardscape composition? Probably spent a couple of hours, I think. Okay. Um, just playing with the rocks. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it takes five minutes to get them in there. Yeah. But then sometimes you just go away, have a coffee, come back and look yeah. from a distance and then just twist a few things. Yeah. I find that standing far away yeah. helps you as well. Yeah. So yeah, a couple of hours playing around with it really. Yeah. It's awesome. a fun part, isn't it? It is. And did you play around with it in a dojo beforehand or just use this as the dojo? I've got the main, two main stones in the, in the dojo. Yeah. And then the little stones are just swapping out different ones until I found the ones that I liked. Yeah. But Compositionally wise, and the angles of the main stones, I was playing around in the sand pit first. And have you used any deliberate kind of rules or guidelines in terms of positioning and strata and stuff, or have you just gone with kind of your instinct? Um, instinct comes into play a lot, especially when you've been axe for a long time, your instincts come into play. But it, if I was starting out as a newbie again, yeah. then guidelines are really, really useful. So the rule of thirds, just the really basic guidelines are really, really helpful to keep in your head. So the rule of thirds, obviously the main stone is here yeah. rather than being central. And we've got supporting stone, which is um, almost the same size, but lower down. So if you think of heights, we've almost got like a triangular shape going on here as well. Mm -hmm. um, and then I've positioned the other stones with odd numbers in mind. So we've got three along the front here. This stone is just off center. This is almost the third stone, if you like. Mm. Um, so it's a lot of things coming into play and also thinking about where the plants are going to grow as well because that also comes into play mm. in terms of composition. Mm -hmm. So there you've got a composition of the hardscape, you've got to think well where are the background plants going to go and where does that come into play in the composition. So if I was to put some background, background bush in here with some stem plants, I'd probably put it about here. Mm -hmm. So you're thinking about those sorts of things as well while you're determining your layout. Yeah. So Going come to plant choice, then that's a natural evolution that we can talk about. Have you selected the plants? Yeah, um, I've selected the main plant in here is uh, Elatine Hydropiper. Oh, nice. So, considered maybe a tricky one, yeah. um, but I know after just doing a little bit of research and also listening to Tommy from Green Acre, it likes cooler waters. Yeah, right. I think it's native to like Russia and northern Euro Europe oh, areas. Yeah. And the, the temperature ranges from like 6 to 25 degrees, so yeah. it does like cooler waters. Okay. Run it with no heater, I think and that's gonna be the key. I think if you run it too warm with Elatine Hydropiper, yeah. I've never grown it before, so this yeah. is a bit of a guess as well. But. For those that don't know, it's a very, it's kind of in, in my mind, it's a very small version of Glosso. Yes. The leaf shape and the texture, it's quite a shiny leaf, quite a kind of teardrop, Yeah. and the carpeting effect. It um, looks like it grows really tight to the yeah. substrate as well, whereas Glosso can sometimes go a little bit leggy. Leggy, yeah. I find, um, the best carpet of gloss I ever grew was when, was my first decent aquascape, which was Mother Microsorum. I don't know if you remember Microsorum, that. yeah, I know. Yeah. Massive Java fern. Yeah, I know. A, basically a carpet of gloss. Yeah, yeah. And the, the only thing I did differently in that was I was supplied the plants already in their submersed form by another hobbyist. Okay. And I, I cut, I 
I had it as a, already as a carpet and I cut each individual plant nut. Yeah. So I had one leaf with, with you know, right. two stems either right. side and then yeah. planted about 60. Quite labour intensive. Yeah, it was, but I planted individual yeah. things yeah. and then uh, that, and that oh. I achieved. And, right. I, I, and I didn't want particularly high lighting or high CO2, but I, in my mind, the trick was actually the initial planting because yeah. a lot of the tips with carpeting plants is, is you know, you break up the, the pot into a clump yeah. and then you plant the clump. Yeah. And then sometimes that can force it to grow up yeah. sometimes. But if you, if you actually cut it it individually, it has to kind of create yeah. a new runner. You're almost telling the plant. Yeah, what to exactly. Do. So that, that's something maybe. That's I know you're not going to do that that's today because it will yeah. take you. We'll be here all day. Yeah. But something to consider for other people that that's might be watching that want to grow gloss. So. Ah. And what other what other plants then, Dave? Well, uh, so it's minimalist. This going to be. So there's only going to be two plants eventually. Okay. The second plant is Areocalum Vietnam, oh, which yeah. is like a small spiky grass plant, mm. grows in little tufts almost. Yeah. And that's going to be used closer to the rocks, and it's also doesn't mind shade. Ah. Got it growing in a tank over there. Well, almost I expect for your shade area then. Exactly. So we're going to put some here, yeah. maybe some here. Yeah, yeah. And just up near the rocks, really. Yeah, like a transition. Transition plant. Yeah, beautiful. I do love, I do love that. It reminds me of mm. a chorus or acarus. Have you yeah, seen that? Yeah, yeah. It looks like a terrestrial plant, very spiky. spiky. Yeah. And quite unique, actually. It is. Yeah. It's really, really nice. It's not too difficult to grow. Uh, yeah, it's easier than the kinderum, isn't it? It is, yeah, but it's, that requires softer water, yeah. I believe, and yeah. uh, obviously lots light. of lights and yeah. CO2. Awesome. And, um, Any helping plants to so get it? Yeah. Plants to go yeah, so yeah. we normally use, even though we're not going to be using this plant long term, mm. it's a uh, helping supporting plant against algae in the early days mm -hmm. so we're going to be using a plant called Rotala boschii or okay. boschii I'm not sure how it's pronounced exactly um, and that's like a, it looks almost like a green wallichi eye it's very mm. thin needle leaves really quite tight and feathery a little bit like Myrophyllum guyana perhaps yeah. in a way or Diplodis do you remember yeah, that Yeah, I remember one? that one. Yeah, Eutrophic used yeah. to do that one as or well. Or the Rotala nangensian. Nangensian, yeah, yeah I think yeah. it might be really similar to that one yeah. as well okay. and that's going to be used a small bush behind this kind of main stone okay. and I'll kind of do it in a dome shape I think yeah but that's really going to be temporary maybe for two months okay. and then once the carpet's grown in the tanks established then we'll just take it out yeah so what, what made you choose the yellow tiny hydropiper because um, you've never done it I before I originally wanted to do never done it before yeah. originally wanted a, a glosso stigma I was talking about this six months ago yeah uh, Iwagumi um, Tom used the Glossus stigma in a 60 centimetre scape over there, which yeah. looks great. But then the I wanted it tighter than that. I thought yeah, it was it's a little bit tighter. laggy, isn't it? Yeah. So Elatine Hydropiper, I think you mentioned Elatine to Tom as well in yeah. a conversation a few weeks ago. Yeah. So I thought, ah, oh, okay, never grown that before. Yeah. Heard it's a bit tricky. Fancy a it's challenge. A challenge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, the ultimate challenge for me would be Eutricularia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've not. Uh, you've never tried I've it? I've never tried it. You've never tried it? No. Well, well, maybe that'd be the next generation, because you yeah. couldn't keep the hardscape, of course, and try new plants. That's true, yeah, that's the, that's the beauty of it. You can yeah. rip it out and put new carpet plants in if you want to. Yeah. Might be worth doing. Apparently it needs really soft water. Yeah, but there's all sorts sure, of conflicting though. reports. Yeah. It's like one of those things, you just try it for yourself and see what works, I guess. Some people like feed them like little Bugs. live food yeah. Yeah, and stuff, I'm not sure. Yeah. Thing. All right, well, should we talk about the equipment itself, starting from the top? You've got the ADA Solar RGB. Yeah, our favourite light. I mean, it's a stunning looking light for yeah. a start. Um, ADA just have made the perfect light in my opinion, in terms of colour rendition. The way it makes all different colours look, greens, reds, you just got the ADA vibe, the ADA look, which everyone's... Yeah, and the design of the unit really itself. For. Yeah, and the design of the unit itself. Oh, it's just it's, beautiful, isn't it's it? Stunning. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's obviously not cheap lights. How much are we talking? It's uh, eight hundred pounds for the light unit itself. Okay, so nine hundred bucks or so. Yeah. yeah. You've got and then you've things. Is that the ADA light stand as this well? This is the light arm. So that's about two hundred seventy-nine pounds for the light arm. Okay. You can buy some shades as well for it for eighty pounds. Could do them right now, to be honest. I with know. You. Yeah. <laughs> So when you're sitting down in the living room, you can get these like shades. Literally, yeah. I put my arm there now. I can I can see. Yeah. So they're worth buying. Um, okay, and then the tank. So yes. This is a, the D and D now uh, Aquascope 900. Yeah. Awesome. It's 90 centimeters by 45 tall and 50 front to back. Okay. So that, slightly deeper front to back. Then. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. It's got a volume of about 200 liters. So okay. It's a good so about size. 50 gallons. Yeah. yeah. We've got a super matte anthracite cabinet. Very nice. 
This is a brand new um, tank, so okay, it's nice it's and clean. System. Yeah, yeah, lovely. Very nice silicon work. Yeah, uh, nice and clean. Yeah, awesome. um, filtration. Uh, was a uh, 600 on this one okay. by a master. Yeah. And uh, some inline CO2 okay. uh, using a strideways regulator. Okay. Um, they're great regulators. Yeah, we good results for those. Really, really good, yeah. yeah. And the needle valve's quite precise in them, which uh, we like them. Yeah, that's good. And with the filtration, do you swap out any of the media? Would you... Yeah, we usually swap out the blue sponges mm -hmm. for uh, biomedia, usually Seekin Matrix. Okay. You could use you know, Neo or whatever your preferred uh, biomedia is. And yeah. um, we'll run some chemical media. We'll double up on the Purigen and uh, Matrix Carbon. That just absorbs any waste, organics, tannins, and mm. makes your water crystal. Awesome. Good in the beginning to have lots of uh, chemical media. What's your thoughts on, um, I was chatting to Ariane about this, uh, the, have you ever used inline reactors rather than diffusers? I'm not, no. Um, I've got quite a few customers who use them and yeah. swear by them. Yeah, because I find the Especially with the black background, I find the micro bubbles really yeah. distracting. And not so bad on obviously with an illuminated or a clear background. Yeah. I mean, you, 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 I can see them now, but I can only see them when they're in front of the wood. Yeah. Um, but the, but the, in my from my experience or from what I've heard, the plants actually prefer the micro bubbles. Yeah. Because they are a gas form, and the plant is almost confused into thinking it's growing out of water and it can use that CO2 in its gas form. Right. Whereas with a reactor, the CO2 is completely dissolving in the water yeah. and it has to use energy to convert the dissolved CO2 right. in, into what it can use, into yeah. carbon it can use. So, yeah, it's an interesting one. So it's always a trade-off, isn't it? Like the aesthetic impact of micro bubbles, bubbles versus yeah. the better growth. Yeah. Uh, yeah, interesting. I think some people, yeah, you can be bothered by the bubbles, especially if you've got a black background. Yeah. So, yeah, it's whatever works for yeah. you. I think they're both good methods, but... Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and substrate? Uh, Tropica soil. Okay. I'm topping that with uh, Tropica soil powder as well. Okay. I also, down the middle, used um, some uh, Weo Eonian, which is almost like volcanic uh, gravel, if you oh, like. I've yeah, I've heard of that. And the reason I used that um, was to hold, it doesn't roll as much mm. as soil, it kind of locks together. Yeah. So when you're using banked up substrates and you want them to stay, put that underneath. Yeah, it's got. It's kind of got its own friction, hasn't it? Yeah. It's quite a porous, yes. almost like crushed lava yeah. rock. It's really sharp, really rough. Yeah. Yeah. And Ty, he's a WEO ambassador. Yeah. He's saying it's actually more nutritious than Amazonia. He does I'm, say, I'm yeah. I'm not sure yeah. about that. Well, but. we used it in the 45P, the tiny little Iwagimi, okay. and that was all Eonian. And to be fair, the plants grew really well and they look stunning. Wow, so. I might have to try it out, you know. I'm doing a new 60 scaper line, so I'm curious to. Yeah. Try a new substrate out. Yeah, it's worth trying. It's a, it's a pain to plant into because it's quite harsh. It's yeah. not soft as soil. It reminds me, I don't know if you ever remember Laterite back in uh, the day. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. This is like used yeah. in the 80s and 90s as yeah. a uh, base layer. Yeah. And you, we used to mix it up with a, with a fine gravel and the bottom third of the substrate would be Laterite mixed with fine gravel. Right, yeah. And then you top it up. But the Laterite itself is... Um, Really, really rich in nutrients, especially iron. Ah, okay, yeah, that's yeah, that's what the Rio is. Yeah, is, so I wonder yeah. if it's a similar, yeah. similar um, product, or similar yeah. kind of, you know, geology. I think I'd probably use it as a base layer or an underlayer for yeah. that nutrient content and also water flow and oxygen, yeah. and bacteria and stuff. Yeah, as opposed to something um, like the ADA power sand. Yeah, a similar kind of concept. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Yeah. Awesome. So, that's, I think that's the system in a nutshell. Do you anticipate mm. any? Any issues in the early days? Well, the Elatine Hydro Pipe is a new one for me, okay. so we're going to run this at cool temperature and hopefully it will work out. I've got 24 pots to put in there, yeah. so I think planting densely is going to be in our favour. Yeah. Plenty of water changes with cool water, um, lots of light from the beginning. Yeah. I think obviously you can't turn down so largely be anyway. Uh, lots of CO2 from the beginning and see how it goes really yeah so, so what's, what's your process going to be in terms of actually escaping the, the setup then? um so i'm going to be start, do you do you fill the water a little bit first or do you just i just dry? spray spray okay. you know, i just spray get the soil almost just moist um some people prefer to plant in dry because maybe the plant wet plant will stick to the dry soil easier yeah. Yeah. i don't think whatever works for you but i spray it all Okay. and just keep spraying as I go along. Okay. And then the plants, I'll push in half the plant underneath, yeah. half the plant poking out, 
just so it anchors down. You don't want obviously them to float up. Yeah. And even the portion of the plant you planted underneath, it'll grow out, it'll find its way out. Okay. Even if you can't see it straight away. And do you, um, you've prepared the plants already, I've noticed. Yeah. Yep. And how have you done it? Have you got little clumps? Yeah, basically the Elysine hydropiper comes in a little jelly, so you wash that off. Mm -hmm. and you can almost just break that one up into little clumps. Okay. Uh, certain plants you could use scissors and cut them up. Yeah. Certain plants you can unravel them. So but you normally will get about eight to 10 plugs or portions oh, out okay. of each one. And then each pot will cover normally about a 10 by 10 centimetre square mm -hmm. if you're planting them quite close to each other. So hopefully 24 pots will do the coverage more. 24 or pots? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. How much are they? Uh, six pound a pot, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's ramping up. It's it so ramps, expensive system, it ramps up it? the cost, yeah. Yeah, yeah. In my eyes, um, it's more money initially. Yeah. If you can shorten the window of algae mm -hmm. in the early days by growing any tank quicker, yeah. then it actually that extra money spent straight away yeah. um, saves you trying to solve or fix a problem, yeah, spending yeah. more time and money. Yeah later on yeah. so, so it pays for itself in my eyes yeah, and yeah. I, I know that from experience yeah. it's I know I've underplanted before got yeah. algae and spent time and money trying to fix yeah. it so yeah yeah if, really if you can point. afford it it's worth yeah doing. it's worth investing as many uh, plants and as high quality I would this say, is a, yeah. a thing that I often and we take for granted because you know you obviously have access to the freshest plants possible yeah but yeah a lot of folks that are watching won't have access to healthy plants all the time so yeah it's if you can you know if, if people can get access to the healthiest plants have a chat with their store owner yeah, get yeah. them to order them in especially <coughs> if possible yeah. and get there the next yeah, day definitely recommended to do that you can yeah. do an advanced order yeah like with us for example if you want them for the following week let us know exactly what you want yeah and then if like you say if you get the freshest plants in that's another thing against algae isn't it yeah. healthy plant mass so 24 pots of elatine. Do, do you find the planting process therapeutic? Yeah, I like it. It's um, There's no effort required. It's yeah. it's just soothing. Yeah. It's repetitive. Yeah. You just get in this kind of flow. Yeah. Um, the hardscape's always a bit more thinking process. Yeah. So I spend more time with that. The planting, it's just it's off the cuff. It just happens now. You just, yeah. you've done it. That's and really it's relaxing. Good. It's relaxing process. That's a really good um, point, actually, contrasting the hardscape uh, design and and you know composition with the planting so yeah, yeah the hardscape is like the most artistic and creative yeah, process yeah. and choosing the plants is creative yeah. but the actual planting yeah is the actual physical action yeah yeah and that's actually where i get a lot of my um like meditation yeah you know that kind of so yeah. you can switch off from the outside world put all your focus on yeah. the onto the tweezers are going to yeah. be using ada pin sets i guess yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and even that in itself yeah. just a high quality pair of tweezers adds to that sensation, yeah. the feel, the ease, yeah. which at the easier and the smoother a process, yeah. obviously the more relaxing, enjoyable it is for yeah. you. So yes, again, they're expensive tweezers and stuff, but if this is a hobby that's for you for life, yeah. it's not that expensive for using them for your whole life. It, it just adds that sense of luxury. Yeah, and then, it is a luxury. And, and yeah. actually every time you use it, we see it, you yeah. get a little bit of joy. Yeah, you yeah. Know, and the, people will argue, yeah, you, you can get the same results with much, much cheaper, and that's true. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But it doesn't make you feel the same. Yeah, And actually, yeah. How, you can't really put a price on how yeah. something can make you feel. Yes, yeah. And if you're having that feeling, and you're doing a lot of scaping, like you yeah. are, um, then, yeah. It is. Every time you use that, you're not yeah. paying any more for using it, you've already bought yeah, it. Yeah. So you're getting more and more value as the yeah. time so goes yeah, on. It's a really interesting concept, the, uh, the, uh, the, that kind it of luxury. It almost makes you, for me anyway, it makes you value that product more. Yeah. So it's less less of a throwaway thing. Mm. And we can be quite wasteful in, a, in this, as generally in this society. We are yeah. unconsciously, unfortunately, and everyone's thinking about it at the moment. But if you've got something that you've really invested in and spent money on, mm you're actually you're going to take care of it. Mm. You're going to look after it. And then so. you're going to get a better result. Yeah. The escape's going to look better. Yeah. Because you're using not just the products are functionally superior, which yeah. they potentially aren't actually, you yeah. know, in terms of pure Marginally functionality. Anything, yeah. But in terms of how it makes you feel yeah. and, and, and the aesthetic, yeah. you know, that, 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 yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Iwagumis are a little bit controversial for like diehard fish keepers because yeah. they're often very stark. Yeah. You know, and um, you know, you, you wouldn't want to be keeping a fish that's a cryptic fish, for instance, that loves to live in a cave yeah, in, yeah. in an Iwagumi. So, you know, have you thought about the fish selection? Yeah, well, going off experience with fish and what fish are comfortable in an Iwagumi, mm -hmm. 
Um, we've had Black Neons, mm. you'll remember, in the Mosscape. Yeah. And uh, they were in there four or five years. Yeah. Um, and they were quite comfortable. They're sort of mid to surface swimmers. Yeah. So that positionally, that'd be great for this tank. Um, and yeah, you don't want a, a fish that's easily startled, easily yeah. jumps, yeah. is, you know, you know, okay with people walking past in the shop and yeah, things like course, that. Yeah. Black neons are like that, they're a good choice. And they're okay with the cooler water as well. Yeah, that's the, if you can go down, we're gonna be running it at probably 21, 22. Okay. And black neons for us at 22 were fine. Okay. So it is making sure that you run the temperature as low as the fish is happy with. Mm. Um, so we're bearing that in mind. You could go with something like uh, mountain minnows as well, mm. which do like cooler waters anyway. Yeah, but they're not as good a shoulder, are they? No, they're no. very, yeah. I think yeah, the black and white, and the, the black and white sort of, it would match the stone really nicely. Yeah. So yeah. I think it's a good shout. Yeah, I think, how many would you put in there? About 20, 25 maybe. Yeah. It's quite a deep tank, so maybe 25. Yeah, and algae crew? Yeah, standard Amanos uh, and cherries, and then we really like these panda garrets that we've been putting on our tanks yeah, recently. Okay. And they like cold water, they're in the cold yeah, water section in the shop actually. Yeah, yeah and, I've, um, I've seen some in here. You can literally see them nibbling on the Anubis leaves, not on the natural leaf, but the algae on the leaf or oh, wow. on a rock. Or, okay. They, they are literally doing so something. The BBA as well? I think so, yeah, because the wood I haven't cleaned in ever. It just doesn't need cleaning. I think you're always going to get algae in escape even no matter how much you look after it but what they're doing is polishing it off and getting anything that you haven't got wow, okay. um they're really cool yeah i've never kept them we use um flying foxes as well okay in some of the types, yeah, yeah okay the smaller type and they get about about that big yeah um ada and amano use them all the time as well they're yeah. well-known algae crew uh -huh. wow That's okay i think we can start planting dave yeah excited can't exciting wait. well thanks so much where can people find you? Uh, so people can find us online, yep. www.aquariumgardens.co.uk. Yep. Uh, shop is based in Huntingdon, Cambridgeshire. In the UK. In the UK. So yeah, either order online for your plants, your hardscape, um, generally coming down for the shop for hardscapes, even if you travel far and you get everything under one roof and you get oh. people to help you out with your scape, yeah. come down to the shop. Yeah, and it. get inspired as well. Get inspired, one on yeah. one, one on different one perspective and you get to see yeah. all in person. Oh, people can follow on social media as well, Instagram, YouTube. I'll yeah. leave links in the description. Yeah, Instagram, uh, YouTube, Facebook. Thanks, um, we regularly post on all of those. Yeah. Well, I'm really excited to see it planted and mature. Yay. Cheers, mate. Cheers. Awesome.